press the Y button for accessibility options. A few weeks ago, we put out a video discussing the sad state of the Need for Speed series. While it focused on both the 2015 reboot and the 2017 reboot sequel, it also included a pretty dire outlook for 2019's Miami-themed Need for Speed Heat. Honestly, I was surprised by the reactions to that video. It felt like most of you were optimistic about the new game, and thought it was an opportunity for the failing series to finally get things back on track. So I took that as a great reason to do a follow-up video specifically on Need for Speed Heat. With the game now released and available to play, we can find out whether it's a high-octane resurrection or a sputtering disappointment. After playing for more than five hours, I feel confident in saying that it's not very good. There are all sorts of problems that I have with the game, but there are also some genuinely exciting design choices in it. And while the bad definitely outweighs the good, I think it's important to talk about both, because I want the series to return to racing excellence, and Need for Speed Heat is a step in the right direction. But before we start talking about the good, we have to talk about the bad. I could probably fill this whole video with an endless list of things gone wrong, but none of them are particularly surprising given the state of the franchise. The driving still feels like a mediocre theme park ride, with frustrating control delays and animation takeovers for complex maneuvers. Oh, what was that? I, okay, I hit the handbrake, but it felt like it kicked into an animation. The story is a weird mix of superficial street culture and exaggerated anti-police rhetoric, and I also encountered plenty of performance issues, including stuttering and partial jagginess, even on my pretty beefy gaming computer. Overall, Need for Speed Heat is a game built around the brands and lingo and pageantry of its target market, but it completely lacks their raw passion. And yet, despite all of those aggravating flaws, some aspects of the game make me excited for the future of the Need for Speed series. The day-night cycle, where you can only earn money during the day and experience at night, adds an interesting duality to the game and touches on class and cultural divides in cities. There is also a liveliness to the world that most open-world racers are lacking, with in-progress street races that you can accidentally drive through. And the police chase mechanic is persistent in and out of predefined races, meaning cops can show up in the middle of a lap and continue chasing after the finish. Once you look past the glaring defects of Need for Speed Heat, you start to glimpse the bright future of racing games. Ones that take advantage of solid-state drives and faster memory to seamlessly transition between race and free roam or that shake up the typical race after race grind with more paths to progress, or that even eliminate the divide between NPC and human player by providing lifelike AI and shared gaming worlds. It would be easy to scoff at Need for Speed and chalk it up as another dead franchise, but I don't think we're there yet. There's still plenty of road to travel down and bright sights are on the horizon. Oh, hello there. You've caught me practicing my reading. Boy. I sure wish I wasn't illiterate. Clearly you've enjoyed another Subpixel video. If you could like, comment, or subscribe, it lets us and it lets YouTube know that our content is worth watching. In the meantime, I'm going to get back to pretending.